Don't you, Todd? Sure, this one. But I need you for the safe. Same as the one in Richmond. Easy. Get me light. Afraid I'm after your trade secrets, Casey. Who owns this place? The Lord and Lady Melton. You know them? Ah, oh, that's my trade secret. I should have won't come in. They're in Leicester at a hunt ball. You do know them, don't you? I know lots of things, Casey. I know it's crazy to work for a living when you can get your gravy and your kicks as easy as this. as long as you get your money. Listen, anything. 
Anything you do is okay with me, but I don't want you to get mixed up in any violence. You hate it. You always have. I know. Then please, love, don't see Todd again. I've got to see him again. He owes me 500 quid for tonight. Let him keep it. And do what? Pack your fur coat? Send back the new cooker? If you like. Well, I don't like. We need the money. And since I've been working with Todd, we've been rolling in it. Sure, I like the money, I admit it. But that Todd, he's dangerous. You don't know anything about him. Where does he come from? What did he do before he met you? Who is he? Good evening, Mr. Todd. Good evening. Don't see much of you around. Disappointed? No, we not quiet neighbors. Ta ta. Be Michael now. He's very naughty. No, just busy. My dear, he leaves you to look after his guests when you're just engaged. Think how he's going to neglect you when you're married. No, no, come, come, Dorothy, really. Will you excuse me a minute? Hello. And I'm terribly sorry, darling. Birthday. Oh, impossible. No, nope, I'm beginning to hate stocks and shares. Mm. Just so long as you love me. I do. Good. They've been here 20 minutes. Mm. Can I have one break before I show? That too. Oh, I'm so very sorry. Michael, dear. <laughs> Don't be silly. Mm. Please forgive me. And did he have a good excuse? Business as usual. How are you, Sir Charles? Very fit, thanks. And you? Oh, a little tired. You work too hard. You're looking very splendid this evening, Lady Dean. Why, thank you. What a superb necklace. It is rather, isn't it? It's absolutely magnificent. This is my mother's. I'm slightly nervous about wearing it. Why, for heaven's sakes? Well, the stones need resetting. Some of them are loose. Oh. oh thank you, darling. Well, cheers. Cheers. Now, Sir Charles, tell me all about your trip. Ah, the trip. Yes, yes. Mm. Well, we fly to Geneva tomorrow afternoon. Then we are hiring a car, driving on down to Rome. We'll have a week in Rome. After that, we go off on old Binky's boot. Yes, I see. Morning, Commander. Oh, Smith, have fraud squad got that information? Uh, sir. Yes? They haven't got it. Well, what are you doing here? Well, you said... I said get the information. Yes, sir. Right. Oh, Commander, uh, another jewel robbery last night. That makes five on the truck. Mm-hmm. And they all have a pattern. All from private safes while the owners were away from London. Where was this one last night? Off well, Eaton Square, Lord and Lady Melton's. Keen's over there now. This Italian girl was found lying here this morning. How is she, Inspector? I'm still unconscious. Touch and go. Any sign of a weapon? No, no. Oh, there's uh, fragments of glass on the carpet. Did she wear spectacles? No, she didn't. Wonder where they came from. I love wearing your dressing gown. Oh, and you look ravishing in it. Mm -hmm. Coffee. Darling, what do you think I ought to wear tonight? Tonight? The Cavishman's party. Oh, blast. Oh, Michael. I've, uh, I've got to go to Edinburgh. Why? 
I know business. Oh, darling, I am sorry, really. No, you're not sorry. I really believe you never think of anything else except stocks and shares and selling and buying. Oh, sweetie, it's all a question of money, isn't it? We don't want to start married life in a, a council house, do we? I'd start married life with you in an old barn. Just as long as it's soon. It will be. That is all. No wages from last night. Sell the stuff already? Had uh, connections. It's hard. You read about that Italian girl? She might be a gunner. Bad luck. What you can say about it? No. I've got another little tickle lined up, all ready to go. This time there's a thousand in the field. A thousand? Don't you sleep? Yeah, sure. When? Tonight. Tonight? Two in a row? You're tired. Oh, no, but... Tonight. Okay. You pick up a, a good car, say, Jag. Well, I reckon so. Pick up sometimes, then, please. Well? The Mackerson fraud. I've done some investigating on my own. It's a method I highly recommend. Come in, Mr. Keane. Thank you, Inspector. The uh, Melton jewel robbery. Yeah. Well, the only evidence of the house was uh, this. Fragments of broken glass on the carpet where the girl was attacked. I checked with the doctor at the hospital. Tiny pieces like this were found in her hair, as though she were hit with a heavy torch and the glass in the torch cracked. Anything else? Not so far. What about the girl? Still in a coma. Not much hope. So, as well as another robbery, we may have a murder on our hands. Check this number. Possible stolen car. 2.4 Jag, SL8816. Will do. No girls walking around us, will they? No, not this time. So Charles and Lady Dean are on their way to Switzerland. They're giving their staff a holiday. You know them, don't you? You must. I'm beginning to cotton on to you, Mr. Todd. Stop your yapping, Casey, and get on with it. That's it. Report is stolen this afternoon. Sounds like an explosion. Let's check.
All right, all right, you've got me. Leave me in one piece, will you? I'll take another look. We're having rather a busy night, aren't we? Oh, a call from the hospital. That Italian girl who was attacked at the Meltons, she's dead. Anything on Casey? Well, he refused to make a statement. He'll be reminded in custody at Brixton. Well, according to the records, he's a top safe breaker, but there's no history of violence. Well, this Dean robbery must tie in with the Meltons. It's the same pattern and everything. Come in. A present from N Division. The same torch that was used on that Italian girl. Notice the cracked glass. The fragments I found at the Meltons matched it. There was some blood on the dented rim. Where was this found, David? At the Dean's, where Casey was caught last night. It was left on the study floor when the villains ran for it. Villains? Plural? Yes, there were two of them. Two sets of footprints were found by the stolen car. One belonged to Casey, the other to a Mr. X. Now we have two suspects for murder. And the jobs do tie up. All right, let's go over to Brixton and have a little talk to our Mr. Casey, shall we? Come on, David. Right. <laughs> When did you come up again, Jimmy? Two days. I'm going to get you a lawyer, a good one. Hearts. What with? The last 500 pounds. And what are you going to live on? Oh, never mind. I do. You heard from Mr. Todd? No. You expect me to? He got away with the loot last night. He owes me money. How much? A thousand quid. But if I'm going to do time for him, I'm worth a lot more. This fag isn't like me. Now listen, love. I want you to see Mr. Todd. Tell him if he wants me to keep quiet, we've got to up the ante. How much? I want 5,000. Five? Okay. How do I get hold of him? I'm not as stupid as you think, sweetheart. One night I followed him. Try Highfield Court. Okay, so you already has a visitor, sir. His wife. You might have to wait. I don't think so. Isn't that her? Yes. Have a word with her, David. Mrs. Casey? Yes? I'm Chief Inspector Keene, Scotland Yard. Visiting? Yes, your husband. As if he hadn't enough to put up with. Mrs. Casey, he was caught on the job. You must know that. So if he... Oh, no, don't say it. The old routine. I'll help you if you'll help me. It would be in his interest. Who wants the help of a copper? I've got nothing to say. Well, that's not going to help you at all, Casey. Save your spiel for the mugs. It's not me who's making a mug of you. Uh -huh. Well, who is it, then? The fellow you were with last night. You think I need someone to hold me hand? Well, if you're on your own, that sort of makes you a murderer. What? That girl you clouded. She's dead. I didn't hit her. I just thought there was someone else. Leave off, mister. You haven't got to put it on me. No, it's not me. It's putting it on you. It's this other fellow. He's outside. You're inside. If someone does life, who's it going to be? I don't know nothing about murder. I don't know about another man. If you want someone, don't ask me. You find him. The make the post, Mrs. Spender. I must go out for a while. It's very urgent. Yes, sir. Mrs. Casey, your husband was caught red-handed running from the house. What can I do? He wasn't caught with anything on him. No, but the jewels are missing. Who's got them? It won't go beyond this room, my dear, and it may help me to know. Ever heard of a fella called Todd? Todd? I feel caught near the angel. No, not in your husband's line of business. And is this, uh, Todd putting up the money? What money? For me, for your husband's defense. I'm paying. Can you? It'll be a difficult case and a lot of work. How much? 750 pounds. Oh. How much have you got? 500. In advance. Road. You stop in here, are you? I'm not sure. Well, make up your mind. What you after? Wandering husband, is it? Why don't you go and wait for me? Yes, the dodge flats number eight. You get to it with the main entrance there. Isn't that him? Yes, that's him. Thank you. 
this morning, just after 10. Oh, I've just gone out. I've got some money for Jimmy. Please go in. My, my. You know yourself proud, don't you? I manage. The name on your door is Michael Spender. I know you as Mr. Todd. How do other people know you? Lord Melton, for instance. He knows me as Spender. Yeah, you're respected. Is that it? Yes. And in the Lily Road, you're a jewel thief? Yes. Why? Why? I do it because stocks and shares are pedestrian, dull, inanimate. And I'm on a job with Casey and I'm alive. Quick turning in the guts of fear, excitement, even sensuality. There's... No rational explanation. In plain English, you're a nutcase. Now, that's your way. But I am genuinely sorry about Casey. Oh, you'd be thrilled to know that. You've seen him? In Brixton. We well, must get him a lawyer. I've got him one. For 500 pounds. Ah, but it's well worth it. It's worth 5,000. That's a hell of a lot. If you want Jimmy to keep quiet, and me, 5,000. After all, we've a lot to keep quiet about. All right. Five thousand. When? In a couple of days. Thursday. All right, Thursday. Seven o'clock, my place. Seven o'clock, your place, yes. Oh, and uh, turn up, Mr. Spender. Todd, wherever you are. Or I'll let the police on you so fast you won't know what happened. Mrs. Casey! <laughs> Casey. Her body was found on the edge of Hampstead Heath early this morning. No sign of a struggle. Meaning she was killed somewhere else. It seems so. Her body had jumped on the heath. Any signs of footprints? No, the ground was too hard. Nothing else? That's it. Yeah. Well, let's try this for a theory. Now, we know that Casey has a partner, our mysterious Mr. X. Right. Now, supposing Casey tells his wife who Mr. X is, perhaps tells her everything, and uh, Mr. X finds out. Mr. X would be very nervous. Yes, he would indeed. He'd be so frightened that Mrs. Casey will talk because her husband is in jail that he knocks her off. There's something else. Yes? The method of killing is identical with the Italian girl. Head injuries. Fragments of what we suspect is a vase were found in her hair and scalp. Has Casey been told his wife's dead? No, I gave orders. You know, David, sometimes I have great hopes for your future. Thank you, sir. I have hopes for myself. Yes, all right. Talk to Casey. You better go over and have a look at his house. Look out for notebooks, telephone numbers, anything at all that gives a lead to Casey's partner. Right. <laughs> Good 
Casey. Sit down. Cigarette? No. Casey, I've got some very bad news for you. Yeah? I bet you have. I'm very sorry to have to tell you this, but your wife is dead. You're trying to trick me. No, Casey, she's dead. She was murdered. I made a arrangement for you to come along with me and identify her. It's a lie. A trick. Oh, it's the truth, Casey. Now, Sandra is dead. Her body was found on Hampstead Heath early this morning. Get a glass of water. Now, sit down, Casey. Come on. Well, it's a dirty, rotten lie! Look, if you hadn't tried to be so clever yesterday, if you'd only talk, this might never have happened. You're tied up with a murder. Can't you understand that? First the Italian girl, now your own wife. No. It's a trick. You just want me to talk. I'm sorry, Casey. Casey hit his head? No. Uh, I... That'll do, officer. But Gideon was. You're not here to question my staff, Mr. Hartz. No, I'm here to see my client, and I want to see him right now. Hartz, wait! Why have you got him? Step outside, Mr. Hartz. I'll tell you when to come in here. I'm here to see my client. It's my right and my duty. And he obviously needs me badly. Get out. What have you done to him? I I'm sorry, sir. Sorry? I'll bet you're sorry, Mr. Barnes. And you too, Commander. Oh, go away, Hartz. Is the doctor coming? Right away, sir. Good. I'm warning you, Commander. There'll be a charge of police brutality. In an effort to force my client to make a statement, you assaulted him. Commander Gideon, I'll have a book thrown at you. I'll ruin you. Commander Gideon, you're in the paper, Dad. Yes. What does it say? Yesterday, James Casey, on remand of Brixton Prison, was taken to Hammersmith Hospital with head injuries following an in interview with Commander Gideon of Scotland Yard. What's it all about, George? I was interviewing him and he fainted. Fainted with his left and you nailed him with your right. Matthew. You gave the rubbish to the press. Thank you, darling. That's just the word for it. A load of rubbish. Listen to this. The injured man's solicitor, Mr. Sebastian Hart. Hart? Uh, that's who leaked the story. Uh -huh. He insisted that a specialist be called to see Casey. Serious head injuries were... Right, you can file these away with the others. We're all sorry. I'll like... oh, forget it, then. Let's get down to business. Do you find anything at Casey's house? No. A couple of photographs of Mrs. Casey, but nothing that might lead us to Casey's partner. We have nothing on Mr. X. Oh, yes, we have. We've got the pattern of the jewel robberies. All the people robbed, the Meltons, the Deeds, are well away from home at the time. Our man, you not only where to go, but when to go. You think you knew them socially? Yes, I do indeed. There's a definite link between them. But what have they got in common except an expensive taste in jewels? They have Mr. X in common. Their paths must cross somewhere. Some mutual friend, a club, a boardroom, maybe. And at that point, we'll find Mr. X. I want you to find it, David, the common factor. Good morning, Commissioner. Can you spare me a few moments, George? Certainly, sir. Another one who's been reading more than the racing columns. I have half a dozen press clippings here. Why didn't you tell me yesterday about this Casey affair? Well, there's nothing to say, sir. You were questioning this man. He was taken to the hospital. Well, it was a stunt for the press. Casey fainted and cut his head, that's all. Yes, but why did he faint? He suffers from hematophobia. Which is? It's morbid dread and sickness of the sight of blood. These people faint to the sight of a cut finger, even a photograph of one. Oh, I showed Casey a photograph of his wife's dead body. He just keeled over. When he fell, he cut his head on the edge of the desk. I see. That's a nasty story. And so many people are ready to knock the police. Well, I'm sorry it happened. George, please. You've nothing to apologize for, and we all know it. Believe me, you have my full support in this all down the line. I'm just hoping you won't have to answer these allegations in public. My wife was murdered, wasn't she? That's what they say. It was Todd. Don't say so. Why? I want the culprits to nail him. I'm inside. I want him inside, too. Listen, Casey. Nailing Todd on a murder. 
a rap isn't going to do you much good. Maybe he gets 20 years, maybe you get 10. But there won't be much up on the winter night, will it? I suppose not. Because of this assault charge, I may be able to get you bail. If you want to settle with him privately when you're out of here, well and good. But while you're in here, you keep your mouth tight shut. Okay. But you get me bail. Get me out of here for 24 hours and I'll fix Mr. Todd. Permanently. You missed me. Mm -hmm. Three days is too long to be away. What's all this? I'm living. Yeah. This country. Is that what you wouldn't say on the phone? I didn't want to tell you until you were here. Oh, Michael. I'm getting up for good. No more grey old England for me, ever. When do you have to go? Tomorrow, if possible. You come with me. Look, darling, a very big deal has come off. It was almost, you might say, daylight robbery. I'm rich. We can now buy that five-star desert island. Oh, darling, that's <laughs> wonderful. Then you'll come. Well, of course I will, but... But what? Well, what about the family? The white wedding? Oh, the hell with families, the hell with ceremony. Oh, darling, I can't... Oh, look, if you want everything done by numbers, then you just wait for somebody else. Michael, will you listen to me? Look, of course I'll come with you, but if you don't mind my asking, why this sudden rush? There must be some reason. But darling, one day I'll tell you. But for now, please, trust me. Look, I promise you, it's all going to be plain sailing. Number two remand, Your Worship. James Casey, is the defendant represented? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Are the police ready? Your Worship, before we begin, I should like to call your attention to the serious injuries my client has suffered since he appeared in this court two days ago. Yes, Mr. Hartz. I want it placed on record that the defendant was brutally assaulted whilst in custody. I take it that you reported this matter to the prison authorities and to the police? They were the people responsible, Your Worship. <laughs> Mr. Hartz, you know the procedure. You can apply for a warrant. I don't want this to happen again, Your Worship. Where is all this leading? Your Worship, I would most earnestly ask that the defendant should be released on bail. He has urgent domestic affairs to attend to. He has also to instruct me with regard to the grievous harm that he has suffered at the hands of a certain senior police officer. Mr. Hartz, I cannot allow that allegation. And what are these urgent domestic matters? Whilst the defendant was in custody, Your Worship, his wife was found murdered. Naturally, in these terrible circumstances, my client... Your Worship. Before this goes any further, I am the officer concerned in the alleged assaults on the defendant. So I believe, Commander Gideon. I should prefer that in this court, all the facts be made known. But I, I would welcome that, Your Worship. Yes, I visited the defendant in Brixton Prison yesterday. And you had visited him on the previous morning? Yes. Now, would you tell the court, Commander Gideon, what was the purpose of that visit? I thought the defendant might have information useful to the place. But you found the defendant uncooperative? Yes. And when you visited him yesterday, he was again uncooperative. He was. So you lost your temper? Yesterday, sir. I put it to you, Commander Gideon, being twice frustrated, you lost your temper. Yesterday, Mr. Hartz, I visited the defendant to tell him that his wife was dead. Oh, so that was it. No interrogation, just a mission of mercy. That is a lie, Commander Gideon. This is what I found in the interview room at Brixton yesterday. An official statement form, and on it the name... James Casey. That's what you wanted, a signed statement. You've got no right to that document. I would do anything to secure justice, to expose the fact that you went to Brixton to cajole, to threaten, to force my client. The fact is that I told the defendant his wife was dead, he wouldn't believe me, so I was forced to show him a photograph of his wife's body. He fainted, struck his head on the table. He fainted? This man fainted? Yes, he did. You were alone with the defendant. Oh, yes, I know that, and you questioned him. And he fainted. Why, it's unbelievable. It's ridiculous. This man is in the prime of life. He hasn't had a day's illness for years. He's fitter than any man in this court today. And yet you say, Commander Gideon, that he fainted. Your Worship, I submit that this is impossible. Your Worship, I ask that the defendant be allowed to identify an article which is of the greatest importance in this matter. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Casey. And may we know what this article is? Open it, Mr. Casey. Uh, 
What is this article? It's the defendant's own handkerchief which I used to stop his bleeding. Like you, Mr. Hartz, I too would do anything to secure justice. Nice work, sir. Casey? Come on, Gideon, I protest. All right, that'll be all, Hartz. Look, you're not going to get off, Casey, so why keep it up? Better sell business. It was his idea. And that's all the thanks that I get. You've had your money. Casey, who planned those robberies? His name's Todd. At least that's one of his names. He's an odd sort of bloke. I've never been able to place him. Did he attack the Italian girl at Melton's? Yeah. You think he killed your wife? Yeah. That was my fault. I sent her after him. You sent her? Where to? A place called Highfield Court. Lily Road. <laughs> This is the flat that Mr. Todd rented. Mm. Looks as though he's not for good, doesn't it? Yes, it does indeed. But his rent's been paid up in advance. Let me. Look at this. Pieces of glass. From a torch. Funny thing you should be asking for, Mr. Todd. I've just remembered there was a woman came looking for him the day before yesterday. Could you describe her? Yes, I think I could. I was just going to direct her here when we saw Mr. Todd leaving. Did she follow him? Yes, I think so. She had a taxi waiting. A taxi? No, I'm seeing it. No. Now, I've been in touch with the victims of the jewel robberies. I know their uncles, aunts, West End clubs, stockbrokers, old school friends. Common factor? Yes, yeah, several. And it seems that Titled and Berry Rich are a pretty tight circle. For example, all but two belong to the Carlton Club. That's a nice rendezvous for villains. Mm -hmm. I have the names of three men, all pretty respectable and known to them all. So Mr. James Lytton, Mr. Colin Down, and a Mr. Michael Spender. I'll go and see them. And tread lightly, David, some powerful eggs could be broken. Right. You found Mrs. Casey's taxi driver? Oh, uh, not yet. Yeah, well, speed up, Len, will you? Our Mr. Rex is on the move. He might even be quitting the country. Right. I'll never say no. Are you sure? Yep. Thank you very much. Have you seen this young lady, sir? No, but, uh, have you seen this young lady, sir? Yeah, I know her. You do? Yeah. I took her following the blab. Michael. How's the packing going? Done. I've got the airline tickets. Michael! What is it? Michael, this is Chief Inspector Keane of Scotland Yard. Oh, yes? I'm sorry to interrupt your moving, Mr. Spender, but this is rather important. It's about a jewel robbery. At the Dean's, is that it? I uh, read about it in the papers. You also know Lord and Lady Melton, I believe? Uh, yes, I do. And uh, Jimmy Casey? Uh, Casey? No, no, I don't know anybody by that name. Miss Beaumont tells me you're moving out of England, Mr. Spender. No, no, um, just a holiday. Just one more question. Where were you on Thursday the 10th? I don't remember. The night of the Dean robbery, the Deans went to Switzerland that afternoon. You remember? <laughs> oh, yes, I was here. All evening? Yes, from six o'clock on. Hello? Uh, no, uh, Miss Beaumont was with me. Oh. Well, you were. Weren't you? Miss Beaumont has already told me she went to the theatre with a friend. You were allegedly going to Edinburgh on business. Uh, she's mistaken. I never went to Edinburgh. I think I can prove it. Mr. Spender, I have reason to believe you can assist the police in further inquiries about the robberies at Sir Charles Dean. And I must ask you to accompany me to... No. Michael, no! <laughs> A few seconds too late. Who's this? 
And Beaumont. He shot her. She was going away with him. 